So Marcus is on his first deployment as a new guy and trying to do the best job he can. And he gets in his first firefight and gets overwhelmed. And there's a pred feed of him running the whole time. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we start this segment, shout out to Brent Tucker over at the Anti-Hero Podcast. They recently dropped an episode this morning that I'm going to react to. So if you want to listen to the entire episode, make sure you go over there, Anti-Hero Podcast, and let Brent know that I sent you, all right? Regardless of who you are, where you work, if you're lying and you're doing dirt, there will always be people with the right integrity and the right moral standings that are willing to do the right thing to shed light to the actual truth. This morning, like I mentioned, there was a 27-year Navy SEAL veteran that went on Brett Tucker's show um, to shed light on Operation Red Wing, right? And the Lone Survivor franchise, whether it's the books and the movies. So let's listen to some clips from this podcast from this veteran that's from that community, and I'll give you guys my two cents about it. And, you know, even in his own words on Anderson Cooper, he says that he heard uh, Murph yelling his name that he needs help. Marcus, I, you know, and he said, you know, on Anderson Cooper live, I put my gun down, covered up my ears and I quit right then. I'm, I'm a coward. And just like and that's the real story. He left his buddies and quit and ran. That's and unfortunately, that's the real. I, I wish it wasn't true. I wish Marcus, you know, and that's the story that he told us when he first got out, when he, that we debriefed him. So when a new guy get into his first firefight within this instant, Marcus was a brand new guy. This is his first engagement. You don't really know how you're going to react. And for this particular event, he wasn't that dude. He thought he was Billy Badass until he got on the mountain and bullets started flying and he bitched up. He got a bad case of bitchitis and he fucking took off and he left his buddies to die on the mountain. I'm not judging you. That's fine. Within the Green Beret organization, I've seen that happen over and over again. The biggest dude, the smallest dude, it doesn't matter. If you're not built for that life, you're not built for that life. And that's all right. But what I have a problem with is coming back and making millions of dollars off of the fucking warriors that actually stayed on that mountain and duped it out and sling lead. That's what I have a problem with. Let's keep watching. This book was written for him to change the narrative because it was embarrassing for us. He had, he was given an ultimatum, just like, do you want to know, be known as a SEAL who quit running away and left his buddies, or do you want to be a millionaire? And he chose that, I'm going to be a millionaire. So again, um, I remember I went on the FNG Academy, right? And I spoke about this very same topic about how Nothing is being learned from all these lives that are being lost, whether it was Roberts Ridge, whether it was Lone Survivor, and all the other events that had a lot of failures in them. Instead, what's happening is the higher ups are taking these failures, they're packaging them, and they're selling these failures as heroes. They're making heroes out of those failures, thus leading the current generation to believe that that's okay. When you leave Chapman behind, and you reward that guy with a Medal of Honor, they're gonna think that's okay. When you leave your team on the mountain and ran, because you caught a bad case of bitchitis, the younger generation that's seen you make millions of dollars and now you got a podcast and you're talking in front of government, they're gonna think that that's okay. They're gonna think that. When in reality, you should be under a rock somewhere, thinking about your actions. But no, you're in the public light and you're reaping all the fame as if you're that dude. When those dudes are actually dead because they did what they were supposed to do as warriors. Let's keep watching, guys. And there's Marcus. And the Green Beret goes up to Marcus like, okay, where's the rest of your guys? And Marcus tells them they're all dead. Just like they're all, you know, all of them dead. And there's like, they're all dead. But where are they at? Where, you know, where do we find them? I don't know, but up on the mountain somewhere. So he's not being as helpful as he can. He just says they're all dead. So that information now gets pushed up to higher command. If they're all dead, then let's not risk our force like these Green Berets and Rangers that ran down to rescue Marcus. Right. Let's do a little bit more slow, methodical, right. get more assets in there, you know, during day. Basically, let's slow roll this to recover the bodies so we don't lose any more lives senselessly. When they finally find Axel, 
as far as, and they finally, they, you know, it's like day eight, they finally tell the Green Braves and Rangers where the Sardot is, and rally point, and they get cl and they tell the SEALs that are there, because there's, you know, a lot of my buddies were on that thing that told me the story, and they come up on Axel leaning against a tree, and it, at that time, it's day 10, and it looked like he'd only been dead a day, day and a half max. Mark is saying that he was dead, caused it to slow roll where Axel maybe could have been saved. So not only are you a coward because you ran from a firefight and now you're taking fame for it, you're fake, you can possibly be the reason why Axel died. Had you gathered your thoughts and gave him the accurate information for the Green Beret team that was there, which I knew some of those guys, I had one of them on the podcast and he told me exactly how things went down. So that's why every time I see this dude on social media or wherever, it just boils my blood. Because I'm thinking to myself, like, where is the integrity? Like, how could you call yourself a warrior? Problem with that, just like with Roberts Ridge, and here's a connection with Roberts Ridge, and when they call back to Group 2, guess who's, guess who's the deputy at Group 2 um, when they call back there who's going to basically get this communication and say, get a hold of the talk and do what we need to do? Tim Szymanski. Tim Szymanski. His name comes up His a name lot. does come up a lot. The same guy that basically has been covering up Roberts Ridge of what actually happened there for at probably at that point 10 years, you know, however long right. it is. I don't, don't quote yeah. me on the, you know, for sure. But who's a pro at covering shit up, you know. And there you have it, guys, the connection that's holding all this together. No one left behind means something to me. Fighting side by side between my brothers in arms, knowing that, they got my back mean something to me. I don't care if you're a Navy, Marine, Air Force. We share the same code of honor. And when it's being shitted on all for fucking money, that bothers me. And that bothers a lot of people, which is why Brent Tucker's doing it over there, shedding light to it, which is why more and more Navy SEALs are coming out and speaking up against this because they got some pride and they know what the uniform means to them. Right, guys, again, if you haven't checked out the episode, go over to the Anti Hero podcast, check it out. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, guys. Until next time, take care of yourselves.